James, what we do at the beginning of our podcast is something super fun, which I just feel like yeah, everyone loves it. <laughs> okay. they, they love it. They absolutely love it. Tell me all about it. Um, I want you to introduce yourself, uh, how you would introduce yourself if you were, if you were, I don't know, if you were telling about yourself. Just, you, just, yeah, just introduce yourself. Okay. But it has to be in 30 seconds. I could probably do it in two. Well, I, well two? make it ten. Okay. Me. Hi, I'm James Bay. <laughs> Smashed it. Whoa. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> okay, go. 30 seconds. Didn't, you don't have to stick within the time limit, but here you go. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God. <laughs> That's too much already. All right, let me dial it <laughs> no, back. No, I'm in. I'm in. Like Guys it. and gals. No. Uh, hailing all the way from somewhere else in London. Uh, weighing in at, I can't remember what I weigh in pounds, so I can't do the wrestling thing. <laughs> Um, coming in at six foot one, I think. Um, your favourite sad songsmith, James Bay. There we go, ladies nice. and gentlemen, James Bay. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever been asked to do it, and hopefully the last. I also like the fact that you were you. There was a lot of I thinks. It was like I think I'm six one. Yeah, no I, idea. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it's quite, it's quite a hard thing to do because you've got to like. Big yourself up, haven't Yeah, you? I mean, who, who in this wants, country, let alone he, he's probably not, quite not oh, least the world. Oh, yeah, I could probably do it. I, I, <laughs> I could probably give he, it up. He's happy with three minutes. <laughs> three, <laughs> four <laughs> minutes. Where do I, I start? I, like a mini autobiography. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, you've, you've obviously all read my book, so uh, <laughs> I won't bore you with the backstories. But, James, have you, have but you, let me take you through it again. <laughs> have, you, have you written a book yet? I have not written a book. I love yet. I love the expectation. <laughs> I appreciate the expectation. Thank you. Well, I, you're an I've artist, right? So I would expect at some point. I don't know. No, I've not written a book. I've not really got enough interesting stuff to say yet yeah, i'm still i think my my life goal is to sort of have e even five interesting enough things to say in a book so give me a minute do you know what's so funny is that your life is far more interesting than mine in every single way i'm not, <laughs> I'm not just saying that and i've written a book <laughs> <laughs> that's well, what's, okay all right okay. It, it's one of the worst things i've done and i actually by the way paper book out paperback <laughs> is out today there you go. It's, it's not it's, it's out today out. guys just so so james have you written a book was all the beginning of the plug <laughs> yeah what's that you got what yourself a the segue advertising that on this podcast is big. seamless what a it. segue that what i i, I, I have i haven't written a book sorry to interrupt but i've made a third album it came out the other day so mm. please go and buy it there's my plug there we go leap, it's guys. called leap leap go and get it i feel like i need to sell something now. go it. and get it whatever leap. it is leap is out right now everyone go and grab it um, I, I, I read in an article that your favorite, a book that changed your life, mm. um, was called old country. Um, uh, it was called, um, another country, another country it's by James Baldwin. He's a very good author. He's, James uh, Baldwin. he's, he's really was sort of operating, uh, in the fifties and sixties. Um, and he was, uh, sort of controversial in his world. He comes from America. Not, not part um, of the, the Baldwin family. No, not one of those Baldwins. <laughs> Thank God. No, no. That, would, uh, that wouldn't surprise me. Oh, no, there's though. so many of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. They do everything. Uh, he, he, cut, he was, he was, a, he was a, um, in the 1950s, he sort of came to kind of prominence, I suppose. Big mates with everyone from Martin Luther King to Bob Dylan. And um, he was the son of a preacher. He was a black gay man in the south part of America. Mm. Uh, so he had a pretty intense life experience, wow. but he wrote some absolutely phenomenal books. And, uh, you know, uh, I think that m most of the books of his that I've read are fiction, and they are phenomenal stories about those kind of times set all over different parts of America. Some of them set in like France. He had a lot of time living in Paris. Are they just kind of something about them for me is like a songwriter's dream. There are some moments in books and songs and sort of in, in music, like for me, artists like Joni Mitchell, I listen to that music and I read James Baldwin's books. I do like half a page or I get to the first chorus of a Joni Mitchell song and I have to stop and go and start writing myself. They're just very inspiring. Mm. Yeah. So like that, that, another country, James Baldwin, another country, I read it when I was about 20, felt very grown up at the time. Why, why does very that happen? Complex, why does that but happen? it was amazing. Why does that happen to you? Because I, because I, I, I there's there's so many interesting things that I you're you're so artistic in that way that you're I think there's a lot of musicians artists creators out there who are kind of create because they just they sort of it's just they just create right but you you really love the art form of yeah. creating yeah I, I I love all the nuances I can overthink it all I can go sort of too deep into all the details and 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 but getting lost in there is probably an okay thing um uh, because out of that eventually, it seems, comes at least a seed of inspiration. So, mm. you know, if, 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 if I'm going to sort of bury myself in, in all sorts of different great, I suppose, art, whether it's songs or, or, or books or movies, 
movies there's so much inspiration coming out of movies I don't know if yeah, yeah, songwriters yeah. talk about that enough or I, I, I like to talk about it a lot just watching because for me as a writer watching life happen in a film or actually obviously in real life is where I is where I get a lot of my sort of inspiration. But, but do you not think in film storytelling is slightly lost at the moment? Or no, maybe but, because you know what I mean. If there's we, a lot of like sequels and like franchise, and I don't get me wrong, they're just rebooting everything. There's a lot of reboots. They, How many need, Batman's we some, are we on? We need some fresh <laughs> stories. We, we need fresh stories. I really loved Christopher Nolan, who is is famous for some big I love reboots. That guy. He's been big, big. You know, he's done a Superman movie, done Batman movies, but like Interstellar, for example, or yeah. Inception. These feel like kind of fun original mm, ideas that are yeah. like really quite interesting. And he. He's such a big dog and seems to be one of the only people that kind of gets the backing from Hollywood to sort of go and do those things. But they're kind of few and far between at the moment. Maybe we're not digging in on the sort of indie movie. Like That's just not happening anymore. Arena. Like, but also I was thinking this the other day, just a tangent. It's like, you know, if you took like something like True Romance, right? One of the greatest love stories of all time. That is the most amazing storytelling. It's great storytelling. Yeah. And that just wouldn't happen anymore. But in music, storytelling happens all the time. <laughs> it does. And it's actually, it's there are, uh, points in pop music at the moment where it's it's sort of getting so intense and like lyrics are I don't want to make a joke out of this because I fully support it but sometimes it makes me smile when I hear a songwriter go into such detail about the colour of the toothbrush that was in your mouth and your <laughs> oh your teeth was you said your teeth were so crooked but I thought your <laughs> smile was beautiful and that's I like, love that song okay. huge. I that is a that. line that I would that's exactly that I, th yeah, I thought your, your teeth you know that song exists somewhere I, and respect so to whoever true. wrote it respect to whoever wrote it it's, it's, it's all allowed um, I don't your, know your I guess, your I guess everything, your everything's been crooked. done everything's been done so I, they have to go down the, the toothpaste I think your teeth route, is crooked yeah. but I love route, your smile yeah. you know what I mean there's something this, <laughs> yeah, it, it probably like exists yeah. but, Freaking love but like it's all allowed and um, I, I, I suppose my point is if that's happening in songwriting and it's it's an original take on something at the very least, then it feels I'm, I'm a little, going to be a little bit more inspired than that, than, than yet another Batman. All respect to Robert Pattinson and the new Batman. I haven't seen it yet, but I bet it's brilliant. No? I Too long? Know. I've not I seen know. it. I've Listen, seen okay, it. okay, lots of things. Okay, you hear Batman's meant to be stealth. You hear him walking in with his boots. <laughs> Like for me, that was like what a big. It, what does maybe, it sound like? Glup, 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 like, like a horse a walking in. Guy. Yeah, there's a Batman's here. I was like, what the hell? Batman's meant to be stealth. Oh, Michael Keaton was pretty stealth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was, I'm Mike, all about Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton was so stealth. I like Michael uh, yeah, Keaton. Christian exactly. Bale, silly voice, but I'll take it. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, it's but good. so do you, do you, are you a big fan of kind of um, fantasy and superheroes and things like that? In yeah, a way? I can get into it. There are some sort of depths that I can't, I, I don't have so much into. Like there was. I, my generation was very sort of, there was the Final Fantasy games. Yeah, we, we, we're the same age, we're same right. age. And, yeah. I, and I, mm, nah, I I'm not interested. I didn't like that I was, and, and, uh, Like, um, uh, this is a big Come statement, on. but mm. obviously the Lord of the Rings, it, it all looks fantastic, but I don't know the storyline. I haven't followed it. I'm so sorry. I, I, yeah, I like Game it. of Thrones? I like Game of Thrones I could do. Really? I suppose it's a little bit more lowbrow. <laughs> Love it, but I Who watched. Who are you looking for? That. You're going to have some people coming after. Yeah, you. absolutely. Yeah. That's why I was looking at the room to <laughs> yeah. agree with me. Everybody, straight face. <laughs> They're not going to protect you. <laughs> They're all like James when the aficionados. Game of Thrones. Low is anybody with me? No. I mean, there's a lot of blood and boobs. <laughs> yeah, there is. There's more they, blood and boobs in yeah. that than there is Lord of the Rings, or even well, Harry Potter's a different thing for kids, isn't it? So, anyway, don't, don't you dare say that. Excuse me. Don't you dare say that. Harry Potter's great. It's it's all good stuff. I I I never got into it. I didn't, what the fuck is wrong with you? Really. Confess, I didn't. I didn't read the book. <laughs> no, I didn't read the books. I listened, you're I a the books I listened to Stephen Fry, the audio book. Okay, driving yeah, down, we, driving down to Cornwall. There you go. Family holidays. It was all right. Beautiful. <laughs> it was all right. It was all right. Even you were what eleven. <laughs> it was good to fall asleep to. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is you. okay, mum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. critiquing I, I could Harry do Potter. But I want to like, what has Stephen Fry got to say? Can we put him on? Like, can we? That's. I mean, I probably would have felt the same. But James, I heard you were. I heard one of the things I heard is that when you're the happiest you think you've ever been is when you were learning guitar when you were 11 years old. That's a good, yeah, that's a good one to pull. I, I, I haven't said that kind of thing for a while and I think that's true. And you're asking <laughs> me as a man who's nine months into parenthood. I know, and I right. want to get into so, this. So we I want to go get there. Into this, yeah. so, so thank you very much. There's, there's been an upgrade maybe on that happiness thing. But, but this is a way of me getting into your childhood. We'll uh, get, okay, great. Let's do childhood. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, therapy. Um, uh, happiest I've ever been when I was learning guitar. One of the happiest times I've ever sort of experienced also was which is music related as well so when I was a kid like when I was 12 by the time I was 12 my parents were like get a job shut up yeah they were like you can't we can't be doing pocket money anymore I was like hang on 
Sorry. Uh, sorry. What go uh, down the mine? What are you almost? <laughs> what are you gonna get? I thought you were gonna say what it what it actually was. It was it wasn't go down the mine. It was go down the market and work okay. for them. Yeah. So I went down the market. So I by, by the time I was twelve, um, I, I had a job working in, uh, on the market, but I wasn't old enough apparently to to like sell stuff, which probably makes sense. Uh, so these two ladies had this sort of knickknack stall. I don't know what they were selling. All sorts of random shit. <laughs> um, but I would get up. I remember. It was these, these were some of the worst moments of my life, actually. Getting up uh, on a Tuesday morning, so a school day, at 4 a.m. To, 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 like, eat something, get my bike out the shed in January. Oh, I mean, all year round, but I remember the January nights, mornings the most. Old. Ride down to the market. They'd open up the back of the lorry that they drove down from wherever they live to this market in Hitchin, where I come from, this little town. And... Um, I'd pull out and, and put up the stall, like all the, the metal, you know, this like scaffolding yeah, with like tarpaulin mm, over freezing. it, absolutely freezing. It didn't matter what gloves you were wearing. Yeah. Um, and I was 12 years old. I would do that uh, from five till sort of seven is how long it would take me on my own with a little bit of help from the ladies who were sort of in their late 60s, early 70s. So with all respect, they were not doing an awful lot. I was doing, there's lots of clips and clamps and screws and bolts and freezing cold metal. <laughs> bars <laughs> they weren't doing much were they? I, I must say as well again respect to them and thank you for the job but that was two hours right and then i'll come back after school so hang on i want, I want to do the full chronology yeah, full, as well, give us the full thing 7 a.m i'd go home get in the shower have my second breakfast go to school wait, wait what time are so you, you up in the you've morning done like a four. Half, half day of work already yeah 4 30 probably Did up in the morning to get there up? for five jesus and I, I used to have, it was my first experience. You know how before a flight, you don't really sleep. Yeah. You kind of keep waking up throughout oh, the night. Yeah, yeah. That was me on a, on a sort of Monday night going into Tuesday. So I do all of that. Then I go to school for a Tuesday. And then from school in my uniform, I walk from school to the market. So I hang around for 20 minutes while they were finishing up the last sort of sales. Then I spend the next two hours taking it apart, uh, putting it down, putting it in the back of the lorry. So that day, I got a five pound note for that. Uh, I don't want to sound like... <laughs> Tight, yeah, yeah. maybe. Don't, I don't sound know. it. Don't sound it. Then <laughs> yeah. be grateful. I, I, be I would have. <laughs> tell me about yeah, it. Yeah. I my parents were like, "Be grateful. That's money." I was like, "Yeah, it is money. It absolutely is." I was yeah. trying to say, yeah, it is money." But what about these bags? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was a guy who used to I'm do. Why is your six foot six foot one? <laughs> like, well, you think I should be bigger? <laughs> no, stunted growth. Tell me about sleep. it. Like, yeah, the trauma. But it was two rounds of Weetabix, so maybe you know what I mean. There was one. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, why am I talking about? I'll get to my the the wider point. Um, but also one thing that irked me mm. and I'm still talking about it here today look at me at 31 yeah. years old yeah. is that the guy who did it so I did it like a Tuesday and a Friday and he, the other dude did it on like a Wednesday and a, and a Saturday and he kind of got me the job he'd been doing it for a little bit longer and at Christmas well, like a little bit older kid slightly yeah like a year older at Christmas we both got a Christmas card and the excitement he said is that that has the bonus in it I said oh shit the bonus let's here do it go. open my card he opened his but he opened his first he went oh sick a tenner open mine nothing <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely that's that's your bonus. That's my yeah, bonus. Yeah. Thanks so much. Well done. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Come back next. I should sound so ungrateful. But you're lying. You're lying. There must have been something in there. No, I promise you. There's no. There's no. There's nothing for me. And I remember my, even my parents were a bit like they couldn't even be like you know learn the. There was no lesson to learn. They were like that's that's the cheap. moral of this story is that everyone's a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the reason why I say all of this uh, is that so when I was 11 and I was learning to play the guitar mm. for the first time ever, it, it, I'm sure it absolutely was like one of the happiest times of my life. As, as you learn and you sort of, you get something else down and under your fingers, it's, it's a huge moment. Um, but market job, sack that off eventually, because I, I suppose it was, I don't know how long I did it for. I did a few different the, little the jobs. The money went to your head. The money, the money couldn't <laughs> go to my head if it tried. Uh, I eventually got a job in a supermarket. That was soul destroying. Um, I, did, but, I did super. But, but I, I needed that job because that was that was a bit more than a fiver. That was like 200 quid a month. And I, I, oh, here I, we go. Big I, only money, needed, I only needed that job for a few months. But there was a guitar I really wanted yeah. um, to s sort of save up for. Again, my parents were like, nope, you got to earn that. Which I respect. <laughs> your, your parents like tyrants. I respect it. No, I, I, <laughs> I respect I, it as well. I, I'll, I'll take respect it. it. I'll yeah, take yeah, it. It's yeah. taught me something, definitely. And um, so it only took me three or four months to save for the guitar. But the supermarket job came with a discount card. And my mum mm. was like obsessed with the discount card. That's why she wanted you to get that Absolutely job. Absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> and then I got offered, uh, my girlfriend's parents were from the same hometown and mm. her parents ran the record store in town. Um, they owned it. And um, every teenager in town was handing in their CV every weekend going, you know, if you just, if you ever need anyone. And they couldn't, they literally, record stores even, what, 12 years ago, I don't know, how long was it? Longer than that. 13, 14? 15 years 15 ago, years let's say that. Um, they, 
record stores, even then, were sort of struggling. So yeah. they were this tiny little record store in town who, as a family, so Lucy worked in there with her parents. That was the, they were the people who worked in there. Um, they couldn't afford to like employ someone else. But I, I sat on the till at that supermarket and I sulked so hard that one day um, her dad came in and said, James, we reckon we need one more person if you'd be up for it. And I was just like... So he sensed your sulk? I, I, you say he sensed it. I think I hammed it up so <laughs> intensely. Uh, and I'm very grateful to this day because my point is, after all this chat, my point is that working in that record store and I was actually there the day it closed down and I closed it down with them and everything. It was very sad because record stores around 2006, 7, it's 8, coincide 9. coincided when you started working They there. started yeah. to fall apart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 one year. Yeah, one year I got to work there. I got to work there for the last year of its existence. And I was there for the closing down sale and sort of taking the place apart, which was very sad, but that mm. was one of the best and happiest times of my life. Working in a record store, people coming in. Wow. Oh, I want to I want to I want to hear like this thing or that thing and I I was going through all the records obsessed. I was I loved I used to love the sleeve notes in records yeah, and like, yeah, all the yeah, different yeah. things that I was obsessed with all of that. So What a, were you obsessed with? Are you obsessed with the music or the The style music or? definitely or, or the what? Or or the kind of like what what is that? What's the great movie with um Come on, we all know it. Um, um Jack Black's in it. Uh, Jack Black is in it. And John Cusack. John Cusack's in it. And, it's and called... the, the name Wait, is what? High Fidelity. High Fidelity. I don't think I've seen it. Yeah, it's 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 a similar vibe. Yeah. That the experience that you sort of feel off that movie working in a record shop is sort of similar. Although I was working with my girlfriend's parents, so it wasn't quite the ha same. Yeah, but, dude, hang. but there's something amazing about rec record stores. There were. You, I, I'm I'm in Notting Hill, and you still have some record stores. And it's you're the, in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm so in Notting Hill. Like... <laughs> I was in Notting Hill. <laughs> you were the lady. Are you yeah. Reese of Hans? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me like you actually. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But there's something amazing about people who come into those stores because it's like they're, they're, it's like such a collective different it's type. A, so it, these different people coming in. I'm trying to imagine. Going going I've, I've, been, I've been to Hitchin. Right. Um, I'm trying to imagine the average record store goer there. What are they in there for? What oh, you doing good question. Is it quite an eclectic mix? Or I do it? want to know what he was doing in Hitchin. Yeah, what are you doing in Hitchin? Don't ask questions. <laughs> You don't want to know. Eclectic mix of people. I was selling gin. Sure. All right. Yeah. There's a lot of. I also yeah. worked on the market. A lot of. And I got bones. <laughs> yeah. That was our. That was our. You that was took our my spot. job. <laughs> Were you the old kid? You Did you not get a bonus either? either. <laughs> um. What, what? Eclectic mix. Definitely an eclectic mm. mix. I actually remember there was a. So there was a lot of sort of late to sort of middle aged to sort of early sixties sort of men in sort of leather jackets obsessed with metal, mm -hmm. like metal music. Good on them. You know, they loved all the mad metal music. Um, uh, and then there was a lot, you know what? It was the last time, if we even remember this, because maybe it was a sort of fleeting moment, but I don't think it was. I think it's happened in pop for a long time. We're just, us lot are like the last generation mm. that really had any idea, I think, about a record store in any kind of mainstream. Now mm. you've got to go seek them out and you've got to be really into it. And that's a very small sort of collection of of people in society mm. if they're our age or younger or old or whatever but um it was the last time that like either jules holland or like top of the pops was just about still going mm. whatever was on tv the night before or on the radio in, in the week leading up you they, thinking, they yeah. ran in on a friday or a saturday morning mm. when everyone's obviously not at work like i've just seen this thing on jules holland i've just seen this thing on tv on, on whatever late night talk show graham norton J jonathan ross whatever and they all wanted like i remember duffy do you remember duffy yes. like that, that and obviously the amy winehouse album um, back to black and like stuff like that. Get, that was the vibe. There was a lot of people coming. Getting that. getting that that CD like back in the day and just getting it back home. It's like so you, couldn't it un, you couldn't it unwrap amazing. it quick enough. And, and, you know, and I would just have it on repeat. Absolutely, it was, absolutely. It was amazing. Your little discman that, that we, like yeah. Walkman we, thing. We, we were saying the, like, this before. The emotional connection that you have to that album is was so much stronger because you just listen to it so much and you follow the whole journey. And you Whereas also, a lot of the times now, it's like you just listen here and there. and like, you, You're scrolling through, the internet is in your palm of your hand and you're scrolling through and you can click, click. To, to In a couple of clicks, you can go so far from the thing you mm. started with. Whereas with a record, I guess, a, a CD or whatever it may be, or vinyl, whatever, as, a, as kids, like it was the next thing after unwrapping toys at Christmas at your birthday or when your mum bought you one mm. from the shop sort of thing. You unwrap that physical thing, that physical experience, and this is... You're just obsessed with that. And, you know, other things around it aren't going to sort of sidetrack you in the same way. Mm. So that was the sort of the beauty of that. I remember that. And it's interesting, like there are 
Some what are they now? Gen Z is the next one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we don't know. It's gonna sound is really, it, really old. Yeah. What I don't is care. It? What is it? Gen Z, I think that I, I actually don't know either. Is After it, us, what are Gen, we millennial? Are we millennial? Great. I, I always get confused with this. I don't know. That's we, a way to sort of keep yes. making yourself seem a little Gen Z. Yeah, if you just yeah, say, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm I somewhere don't know. Between whatever. I'm just in between. I'm just, We're all the same. You're one of the baby boomers. But there's a there's, <laughs> there's a there's a there's a Wait, what's that? I don't know. You hear that a lot. I'm trying to categorize us. Let's be. There's a few who feel like they're sort of the next generation after us who are still sort of into, but it's still, I guess, like a few. I feel like you can still go into what, like Urban Outfitters and there's like a whole bunch of records. And yeah. I kind of like that. Mm. Anyway, but that, that record store time. was the, one of the best experiences of my life working in there. It was unbelievable. And it was just because it was, it was me, you know, being, feeling so, so, so connected to music. Yeah. Playing guitar in were my you, room. Were you was, making music? Yeah, point? I was making music. I was uh, in my little town there. We, we were in different bands, me and my brother and, and Tom, uh, who was a bass player and sometimes a guitar player. He's still the bass player in my band now. Amazing. I've known Tom since I was three. We learned to play guitar together when we were like 11. And we've always been into the sort of the same stuff. And um, we had a, a great, I always think it does sort of coincide slightly with the generation that we were. Um, we had a great uh, environment sort of um, community uh, as creative kids playing music in a small town that had one venue and a bunch of pubs with like a room that you could sort of play in. You know, mm. pubs, yeah. you can go see bands in pubs. But I talk about my generation in that respect because it feels like we were the last uh, before uh, Be smartphones and everything. Before and everything exploded. Like, yeah, like I, I yeah. do, I, I, there were definitely a sort of handful of friends who were like had this iPhone thing or had an iPod. Yeah. Okay, what's that? Wow, you can have loads and loads of music or whatever. But when we were like screen. 17, 16, 17, right? Yeah. Like not before then. Yeah, not before then. And so, mm. but from the age of 12, I was doing, between 12 and 14, I started to play in pubs. Okay. Like by 14, my brother, who's only a year older than, uh, what is he, 18 months older than me? Something like that. He's only a little bit older. And he was the lead singer in the band. And he, for whatever reason, had the confidence as we sort of roll around town in the afternoon to sort of walk into a pub and go, do you want some music? <laughs> <laughs> you should be asked to play. Do, you should do, be like invited and you booked. So they will like some... put their pints down and everyone just goes quiet and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh my Kind God. of like in uh, well, American Wealth in London, <laughs> <laughs> almost. Um, yeah, he'd just be like, do you want some like he, he went and got the gigs and then uh, I guess that inspired us to sort of do the same thing and then we were eventually we were doing it together. But like, that was also a very happy time, I got to say. Like that my experience of doing that in my little hometown, which, of which there was only about 30,000 people in it, just sort of about an hour from London. So at that age, not close enough to London to sort of get to London yeah. easily because um, train was expensive and all of that. But um, we, we had a great time doing that. And, and as far as like happiest times in my life in music, like it, I, bit, I was about three or four, four or five years into playing the guitar. We started playing as a band. We were the only band of all the bands going on in schools. We were the only ones sort of daring to do original songs, which were terrible, but that didn't matter. It was exciting. What, what kind of songs were we? What were the titles? Under the Streetlights. Yeah, there we go. That was a big tune. <laughs> that um, was big. High Time. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, nobody That's was a actually, bit more upbeat. No one was, it, it, absolutely. Yeah, there we go. No one was like getting high. Did, well, not that high. Did you, <laughs> did you try and push your own records in the store when people came? You're like, I know you're coming for Pink Floyd, uh, we, but have right, you heard? So, so I can't remember. Have you heard we, this uh, brand new? I can't, so again, like specific sort of generation and everything. We had like a MySpace. Yeah, you oh kind of couldn't you couldn't push that in the record store. MySpace was hilarious, but most people were like, "What's a MySpace?" Mo uh, at the time, most people coming in to buy records were like, "Sorry, you, you would fill, we didn't have a CD." I, I, I listed fifty bands. That's like because I wanted everyone to know just how much I love. Absolutely right. I was like, I'm 50. so yeah, I'm so into music. <laughs> I want to cover every band so that someone go, "Oh, what you don't like that?" I'm like, "No, I've got no, it." Yeah. It's, it's on my it's MySpace. Read, have you seen my MySpace? Read my bio, mate. <laughs> read my bio. You had, you had 50. yeah, yeah, yeah. You literally list everything. You want to fucking seem cool as hell. <laughs> Absolutely right. But we we. Uh, we, it was a good, it was a good sort of time, but there was a week, I remember a week and again, like respect to my, my parents in, 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 in this way, because there was a week when, uh, we had a gig every night. What? We had a gig every single, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we had, we had a gig every night in Hitchin. Man, so, how old are you? 14, 15? Yeah. By that time we were probably 16. Uh, That's mad. So it was like crunch time GCSEs, yeah, no big. interest. <laughs> yeah, no way. We've got seven gigs this week. Yeah, yeah, come on. Don't even think about well, it. You know what we sorry, might- Sorry, I'm touring <laughs> Hitchin. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. My mum was cool though. She would be she like- a tour bus to my go. Mom's, <laughs> just my dad's car. <laughs> Just two, just two dads' cars, because one dad's car was not enough. Seat. Just rolling up to the pub and hitching. We're fucking here. Yeah, oh, well, the, the, we uh, made as it, far boys. as as far as like a tour experience, like there was there was none of that. No, but like it was like hitching, going to Stevenage for a couple of nights. Damn straight. Next door, you know what I mean? We, go, right. we got a show in Luton. Watch that out. was big. 
That was, we went to St. Albans. It was wild. Wild times. But like... That, did, you, did you play under the lights there? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. In all of those rooms. My, the, the, under good, the, the street the, lights. The, the, so. yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on, Jamie. Shit. Yeah. Pick it up. <laughs> My MySpace is Can we just do that again? Yours is not. Can we edit? Can <laughs> so we just do get that end. right? <laughs> <laughs> under the street lights there, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, keep it all. Keep it all. Don't let him get away with it. Um, we yeah, under the street. I, I, I think it was. Nailed it. <laughs> I, 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 we. I remember my mum was just being like, like, what time? Basically, what time am I doing dinner? If you've got, like, she was supportive. Yeah. She, you know, she was supportive of the fact that we had all those shows. She was like, so she, she was a manager, mum, man. She was her her respect to her for sort of going <laughs> very mum stuff. This, but like, let me make sure you've eaten. Yeah. Let me make sure you you've eaten at like what four. Like we get home at 3.30 from school. I eat at 4.30. Then we got to get on the road. Good times. Did you always say uh, get on the road as well? Literally, <laughs> always said, literally never. But that, <laughs> That's insane though. That, but because to have like liberal parents like that, that's, that's like unique, I would say. It felt, you know, for me, uh, learning to play guitar and, and, and I dived into that. I did a couple of lessons, but really my experience was putting records on and, and, and listening and picking it all up sort of by ear and like, Again, like three or four years into me learning to play the guitar, YouTube arrived. So I had a few years where I wasn't watching anything to learn. But then when YouTube arrived, I could like, you know, rewind it really easily and watch mm. someone playing guitar again and like watch what their fingers were doing and copy that. So that was a big thing. But my, my parents, I was all in my room doing all that, door shut, amp turned up. And lots of other guys at school, kids at school who's, who, who were trying to play the guitar, some of them had parents who were like, oh, you want to play guitar? Okay, you've got to practice all the time. Are you practicing now? Keep going. You've got to do it. Keep going. Push, push, push. Very intense from the parents there. Mm. So other people's parents were saying, play guitar for a living. Mm. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not going to get you anything. You need to focus on maths and science. And like some kids that works, but for some creative kids, pushing maths and science on them can be... Mm. Or, or whatever. That's just sort of one mm. example. My parents sort of operated in the middle and just said, you know, if you if you love it, follow it. See what happens. Yeah, but that's fucking wicked though. I love that. It was good. It's uh, such we'll, a great way to be. But I guess... Because parents, it's hard, right? Because I know your dad at the moment, we're yeah. going to talk about that. You, you, you want the best for your kids, right? And yeah. so, and, and also... She's nine months old. She's trying to roll <laughs> yeah. under the chair all the time. And I'm saying, listen, if you want to roll up under the, the guitar, chair... <laughs> yeah. You've Pick got up to, the guitar. You've got to get a job at the market. <laughs> now, my, I, I will say my parents, like, <laughs> you know, there's, 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 there's parents who thought it was unrealistic and there's parents who, who were too intense about it to, to friends of mine. Um, but while my parents sort of gave me all the sort of free reign to explore playing music um, in, in any way that I sort of wanted to, they also, as far as like, okay, what, so you want to make a living out of this one day? They kind of would say, that's not going to come immediately. So like the supermarket or whatever the job might mm. be, you're going to have to do that at the same time because initially, uh, you know, music is not going to sort of pay any bills and it might never. So they did say that and that was very important. And I think I know I'll carry that forward. Yeah, yeah, but also I think what you had as well down to your parents is setting up those things in the morning gives you that work ethic. So you knew you had to graft the something to get it right. right yeah, and, and you know, it was still, I, it's, I, I make it sound like my dad or someone else's dad of, of the guys in the band would like drive us around. We kind of had to ask and it had to be kind of convenient for them as well. Mm. Or else we'd have to find some other way to kind of get amps and guitars to venues, to rehearsals and stuff. It wasn't like super straightforward. This is important. Like they weren't just doing every single thing for us. There, were, there was always a bit of room for like us to have to work something out and mm -hmm. try always try ourselves first. And if we were like completely at a loss, then hey, dad, can you? Yeah, but mate, what, what I find funny is that um, and interesting is that you're one of these people, you, you've loved music since you were a kid. Your mm. first memory was Bruce, yeah, Bruce Springsteen, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I remember, I, I still love Springsteen, but my, my early, we have, me and my brother, I say we were close in age, we grew up like hanging out in the same room and listening to records and playing toys, whatever, together. And um, so the shared experience was fun. That was a, that was a big part of it. Because if I, if he was into more, something more than me, then maybe it turned me onto that music. and Because you admired him or what? Well, just, just the energy of like, when you're a kid and there's another mm. kid who's like, this is amazing. You're like, okay, let me, let me see what that's about. And when that's your brother, who's always there, that's, mm. that's, that was very sort of handy, I think. And probably the same for him. But Bruce Springsteen, my dad used to love Springsteen still, you know, he loves Springsteen and the, the Stones and like, he's like their age. So when, when, when he was 18 and the Stones were kicking off, he, he could sort of go to London or by the time he's like 22, I think he was living in London. He could be around it and go and see them at different venues when they were like a new band and all that stuff. So he kind of grew up with that and um, very much was just listening to it in the house when we were kids. My mum, it was all soul music, stack stuff and Motown stuff. She would listen to out the radio and put those records on. 
Um, and I fell in love with all of that, but it was so sort of the fabric yeah. of my upbringing. Um, it was ingrained within it you. It was right? just in the background all the time. And they, again, my parents were loving it and celebrating that music. So mm -hmm. it, it, it made me even more sort of intrigued. And Springsteen is still a, a huge inspiration to me to this day, but so is soul music. And, and those were all, when, that, when those records and those artists were new, they were the pop music of the time um, in the same way that Olivia Rodrigo is now. So whatever sort of 10 year old is, who, who has parents playing Olivia Rodrigo's music is going to be like, oh, wow, that's, that's, you know, I'm into that too. But you had this loyalty, which is like, we can say, so you, you know, your, your, your bandmate, you know, since Tom, you, yeah. Yeah, you, since you were three, you have this loyalty to the music that you create and make yeah. that you, you, you haven't changed that, you know, you've, you, you've known Lucy, your mm. partner, since you 15, 15 years old. 16, we were together. Yeah, you've been together 13 years yeah, or whatever it is. Yeah. But you have this, this loyalty. The, the record store. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, amazing. How same, insane same, is that? Same, same guys. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In and the record store. Lucy's brother, Art, is, <laughs> is my guitar tech. What? So, but Art, you have I this actually... loyalty towards like your life, which I, which is because just to put it out there, you you hear this a lot of time. You've had so much success in this industry. You have, right? And like, you I know, hope so. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, 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 but you have, and you know, you Still had chasing it. You had success from like, you know, even the first album, right? Yeah, it was man. in the US and stuff like that. Yeah. And what typically happens a lot of the time, as you see it, is that people get success, especially from a small town. Mm. You move out, you go mm. on, you go to bigger and better things, which mm. you think are going to do all these different mm. stuff, and you're going to reach out for all these mm. different people. No, you've just stayed true to who you are, which is a, to, which is rare, right? I, I try, I guess I, I, you know, I, I try and I try and I try my fucking damnedest yeah. to not compare my experience to other folks because there was a great analogy the other day. Um, I heard about like it was actually a guy talking about his kids running a sports day, running mm -hmm. a race, yeah. running the sprint, yeah. and he said his daughter kind of came out the blocks and was just smashing everybody <laughs> came out the blocks. and looking, looking, <laughs> looking straight, looking straight ahead, running as fast as she could. Mm. And halfway down the track on a hundred meters or whatever. And these kids are like eight. And uh, so probably not even hundred meters, I suppose, but running down the track, she looks left and like, hearing all the cheering and she looks to see how she's getting on. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you look to your right and look to your left, your yeah. balance does something and you slow down. Mm. Um, and she kind of came in second or third because she was very clearly sort of quite fast. And then she ran another race and she just kept looking straight forward uh, and she just, she won the race because she was mm. definitely the fastest, but she sort of threw herself off. I can't tell. So that as an analogy sort of mm, for the rest of like life, whoever you are, it's such a, it's such a resonant thing. I love it's, that. That's it's great. Hard. It's hard though. Can we all agree? Like it's very hard not to look left and right. So, hey, of course. So in life, never look left and right. Just keep running. Well, don't compare yourself. Well, we're to what supposed to do doing. inspirational stuff yeah, at the end, fuck, right? Man, Sorry. you ruined it. You we'll just we'll work the edit out. It'll be fine. <laughs> that's that's. <laughs> I do I, it, like it. I do it like felt. It felt. Just it don't feel... compare yourself to what anyone else is doing. Just compare yourself to what uh, you're doing in your absolutely lane. Absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah. And at the same time, a, 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 a relevant sort of point to make is it's very fucking hard. It's mm. very difficult to to do that. Whoever you are, however it's going, uh, my experience is that. Um, I mean, look, my first album was a, was an incredible experience for a first album, definitely. Like you, you, when, when it's the first thing you ever put out and it, it was taking me all around the world and wherever I play, Australia, America, uh, I remember going to play in Japan and we were going all throughout Europe and all these different places and every show was sold out and it was unbelievable, that experience. And it's, it's, it's more or less kind of maintained, but like as time passes, more and more new artists come through and of course they are always the most exciting and they sort of should be. Mm. But... Um, it gets harder and harder to not look left and right. Mm, because yeah. I think if, if something, if, if you come out of, if you debut like I did with, with you're such hitting a here, sort of you're hitting high, here straight away, you yeah. know, then you want to do that again. Um, and you think, okay, how do I do it? And you don't know. I didn't, I didn't really know and appreciate that. I just looked straight ahead because mm. I was completely new to everything. So you glance left and right. And the, the chances, of course, every time, this is why you won't, it's one in a million when Adele's second album is so massive. This is why that doesn't happen to everybody all the time because mm. it's just a rare, it's a rare result. But um, I suppose my, my point is it's, it's hard not to look left and right. And it's, but that's what you try to do. Uh, uh, but that's what you, you have to keep trying to do. And I, I suppose to come back to something you were saying and, and to add to the point I'm making, I guess, keeping those people around me who I grew up with Man. is sort of vital. But, you know, Art, Lucy's brother, youngest brother, he, um, I knew him first. We went to the same school, same secondary school. And um, we were both a friend of mine. He was friends with the brother of a friend of mine. So everybody's kind of close or one person away from each other. Everybody's into playing guitar. Mm. Art is particularly good at like building things and taking things apart. 
And then obviously I met Lucy not long after that and we were connected in another way. But it was really exciting when I had any reason to take a close friend of mine, you know, an old friend of mine, which is what he was at the time already, when we were, when he was 21, I was 23, I think, when we first went on tour together. It was so exciting to, to bring someone Do from, together. from home, you know, yeah, from, yeah. Where it all, from where it all started and from before where it all started. Yeah. Um, he, you know, he, uh, to bring him on as sort of a, a, as a tech like that, because like, re respectfully, there's a guy, you know, who, who takes the piss out of me in the right way. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? got like refer grand. reference points. Do you remember like yes. how it used to be and yes. like look at it now? We've got, got there's a photo that. at the end of, we, I think the last tour that we did for my, for my first album was in America towards like Christmas. 2016 at the end of that year um we were out in america for a couple of weeks doing like radio show they do these like christmas radio shows sort of packaged nights which is not like a normal tour you're on the bill with different artists and stuff and at the end of that tour um we had a massive night on the tour bus uh we had a great time uh i don't really remember properly getting to sleep and then the driver had to pull over at some point wherever we pulled over it was a little bit further south in the country so it was warmer even though it was december and it was like five or something in the morning mm. and, I, and, and the sun was coming up and we got out of the bus kind of for a bit of fresh air also because we were both a little bit, you know, <laughs> we'd had a few. And um, there's this photo that our driver, Adrian, took. I, can't, I have to find the picture. I'll probably put it on Instagram a million years ago. But um, he's gone down the bank. He's like gone down the bank from, from the highway where he's parked the side of the bus, literally on the side of the highway. Yeah. Because there's nothing on the road. It's really early in the morning. And me and Art were just sort of stood next to each other, looking out at the sunrise. And the bu there's this giant tour bus, and you can see the silhouette of it and the door open, and me and Art in the front, standing in front of it. Art was particularly blessing his wasted, with all respect. <laughs> Love you. And um, and he just, but he gets all beautiful and emotional when he's like that. Yeah. And he just said, you know, look at what we've done, look at where we've, and we've had many moments since. I'm, I'm, and then vomited. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> he'd love the story even more if that was the case, uh, wouldn't we all? But um, it's a great picture. We're silhouetted, and there's this huge sunrise going on, like just the very beginning of it. Uh, yeah. And it's a real m memory. Moment. It's a, it's a, it's been captured, and it's a, mm. it was a great sort of moment because after that we went home. We all had like Christmas, and then I started getting to work on the second album, which meant we didn't tour for a little while. Um, but that moment when you realize it and you go like, Fuck, this when is you all realize done. all of yeah. that stuff, but you have They're someone so with epic, you and I had Tom on kid. the bus, you know, Tom was on the bus asleep, but like he, you know, he's someone I've grown up with as well. Yeah. And it's just a wonderful thing to have. Dude, I you can't, you can't write those ones. No, They're this is like, insane. They're just so special. It's, it's true. Just... You, you can't, uh, because also, I don't know, I guess it would be just as likely that you'd start that journey and it would go where it's gone. And, and the guys that you sort of grew up with might not want to carry it on or whatever, you know, I, d I don't know. But like the fact that we've kind of gone this distance so far, it's one of the things I'm most proud of, definitely. It's, it's, it's a cool that. thing to share. Hey, James, we're going to have to stop there for part one. I want to come back for part two, where um, I want to talk about Leap, your album, sure. and the fact that you, uh, you're you vulnerable, this album. Yeah, man. Vulnerability, baby. <laughs> you bet. Oh, you bet. We're going to talk about vulnerability. Let's do it. Oh, we're going to do it. See you in part two. Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of Private Parts. Still here with James Bay. Um, mate, listen, your new album, Leap, insane. Thank um, you so much. Thank you. You know, process of writing these things and coming up with new stuff and first two albums, super successful, you know, in America as well. Yeah. It, and, and then you go into the third one and lots of things with this quick. Firstly, it's about, you're vulnerable in this. Mm. Um, and you speak about a lot of things that have happened mm. to, you know, you speak about Lucy and mm. all sorts of stuff. Why did you suddenly feel like you could you could turn to that place? A few different reasons. One, probably the most obvious, is that I hadn't before. Mm. But then that almost seems a bit like dumb in a way because it's like, well, if I hadn't before and it felt like it gave me such good sort of writing experience and songs, then and why didn't I go before? I think for some reason I was scared. There's a I why found are you scared of that. Well, I found ways. That's a whole deep thing, long come winded. On. But I'll give you my come best. On, I'll come give, on, I'll give you my best. But like I think in so many ways. To, to, to write songs that say thank you, that say I love you, that say I need you. Mm. Um, it's something that's not sort of particularly, it's not often done. And it, and it I suppose, to put it kind of as simply as I can, it, it requires a level of vulnerability that, it, you know, it's, it, maybe it's a little scary to sort of show a more fragile side of myself. Maybe it's a little scary to do that. I think we walk out into the world every day and we sort of push our chests out and we put, you know, hold mm. our heads up 
and we try and be as kind of not tough necessarily, but strong as we can to sort of face whatever comes at us as we go out and, tr and strive to achieve whatever we want to achieve in work and life. And um, the other reason that ties into that uh, for why I've written from this place really for the first time um, is because Lucy and I have, have, have shared this sort of journey and our own journey for such a long time. And she's been absolutely the most vital part of, of, of all of it for me. For all of the songwriting and the me getting up on stage in front of all the people and that being what it is on the surface, I'm stronger because of her, because she exists, because she's still with me and I'm still with her and we, we're still in this together. Mm. And I think for, for the longest time, I hadn't shed much light on that. And it got to a point where it felt like, hang on, that's actually, if I keep doing that, then I'm, I'm almost operating as though she doesn't exist. Mm. She very much exists. Mm. That's, it's, so it all was like a, it's time sort of moment for me in my writing. Is that uh, like a self-awareness moment? You suddenly went, oh, fuck. Uh, like this, this kind person, of this person's always been here, and because I do it privately at home, yeah. I very much recognise, and we have very in depth sort of conversations, and we make all our plans, my plans, whatever. So many of, so much of my my work experience, which is a strange way to sort of talk about my job, because it doesn't often feel like a normal job. Mm. But um, we talk about, we go through it together. She's a huge, in her own way, she's a big creative force in 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 within my creative process, mm. and I love that, and I. I cherish it and um, so often sort of feel like I require it. Uh, there's a very blurry line between how much is kind of just me and how much is a process that I've been through with her mm. to come to um, the sort of end product of what I've made, whatever it may be, a song, a, I don't know, a show, a video, a, a whole album, whatever. And that's just because we're so tight and we have been for so long. Um, so it had just, it was just time to, I don't want to make it seem like it's too big a thing in a way because I think I will always kind of re reference or echo her and, and what she means to me in, in what I do in one way or another. Mm. And, I, and I know I have in ways before, but it just, there was something about facing the kind of fear of just being so vulnerable mm. that felt uh, kind of nourishing. To face a fear is often, it, it often gives you something, if not quite a lot. Yeah. Um, and that all of that ties into the reason why the album is called Leap. I, I, I remember re I was reading a book. There was a quote. The quote was Leap and the net will appear. Uh, a guy called John Burroughs said Leap and the net will appear. That was his, that was his sort of advice. That was his idea. And uh, it felt, it was very moving when I, when I read that um, and, and inspiring. Because it is a leap, right? It, like, this, it's a leap it, it, to be, to go to this place of vulnerability. Yeah, uh, it, You know, and I, and Will I stay here? I don't know. Has it, how's, how's it been for me? I, I've only just in the last six months started playing these songs live to people and now people have the album and they can spend their time with them. And it's scary in its own way, but there's something attractive to us all sometimes about, you know, jumping from the highest diving board yeah. when you go to the pool with your mates or like going on the fastest roller coaster or, or sort of swallowing all your pride and asking that But isn't that out. creativity? It's, 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 it's the only way to grow, really. Yeah, it seems like it. It's to, to face your fears, because otherwise you just kind of stay in a, in a safe space. So you have to actually go, right, let's have it. And it see. So this is, so just for what it's worth, it's, it's, that's a, uh, an opportunity for me to just say, my, my second album was a big departure from what my first album was doing in sonic, in sound, in look. I cut my hair, I stopped wearing a hat. Um, the hat has always been my hat has always been such a sort of signature part of my mm. look and it's sort of tied into my sound for my fans and all the people that love my music and that's all very very important to me and with all respect to everybody who loved that music and who loves it still and I do too but like it, it became too much um, all just the same thing for me to sort of keep doing and being that mm. version of myself it's very much who I am but there's more to me there's more to us always than, than sort of one thing than the one thing on the surface or whatever so the, the scariest but most exciting thing was well what if I change it all because I love all the guys all the artists that inspired who I was on my first album but I love all these other artists too I worked in a record shop there was a lot of different artists to dig into <laughs> you know as my, I love Springsteen but I love Bowie and Blondie mm. I love Joni Mitchell I love Lord Green Day Green Day there we go there you go good great songs great songs you know um and I couldn't help myself. I had to sort of, it was a bit of a leap, obviously in itself on my, on my second record to sort of go, to sort of dare myself to do something else. Creatively, artistically, it felt like the most uh, rewarding way to move forward. So I did it. Um, 
There's a lot of people out there who who love music and listen to artists and, and they don't necessarily follow the same thought process. So when something changes, they don't follow. Mm. Okay, fine. It's all something I have to be willing to sort of understand. Um, but that's amazing that you can follow that though. It's, like it's, like it's following all, yourself, yeah, right? It's all about following the artist's journey really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. but also as the artist, right? That yeah. As the artist, you want to... If you're, look, if you're sitting down and you're going through a writing process, you're like, right, I'm writing my third album and this is the way I'm feeling at the moment. To not follow that is like a negative thing. You've got to follow. And if that feels yeah, a that, bit that's, strange that's and different, the, it's like, well, fuck, what do you want me to write about? The, the true you art, have to follow that, true right? true artistry comes from is when you're giving your true expression of like the state you're in, right? If, yeah. you're, if you're trying to like do something that's not you so to and emulate something else, then it's not. So if I'd have re repeated what my first album was, it would have felt like a bit fake. Mm. Yeah, it's not authentic. Okay, okay. It would have been like, okay, so you love that talking to the, the people or the fans or whatever. Okay, so you love that. Wow. That's an honor. Like, I'm so, that's so cool that you love that. And I'm so grateful. And now I have to strike a balance or weigh up whether I'm just going to do the next bit for you or whether I'm going to do any of it for me. Because mm. I did the first bit just for me because none of my fans existed. I made my first album for me. There weren't any fans. Yeah, 90, that's, 90, quite an, that's quite interesting. I've never thought about it so, like that. So then you, if you're very lucky, you get a bunch of fans on the first release and then you've got to sort of decide. Um, and it's a, it's a tough thing to decide. It's a very difficult balance to strike. Um, I've talked to all sorts of artists about, you know, going into their second records and it's the same, that's complicated. I suppose, dilemma. I don't know if that's the right word to use because it's not necessarily a negative thing. It shouldn't be seen as that. It should still be celebrated if you get to make a second record. That's incredible. Um, and we all are running down that track looking straight ahead and then we look to our right and we see that Adele has had a massive second album mm. and we go okay she, what's she done how's she it's so easy to go off into that headspace yeah. it's so easy to go off that headspace and, and even though she's a great example of a great successful second record and there are other great examples I could reference she's just a sort of recent one it's still not the smartest thing to just try and sort of dive into what's been done there you, you, because really for your soul you have to do yeah. Mate, you have Your to, thing. you have to, without a doubt, you have to follow that. And, and, and creativity, right, is where, um, where you, you don't really know what you're creating, whether it's good. If you, if you, if you're replicating what you've done before because you know it's success, then you're not following your naivety. Yeah. And if you're following, not following your naivety, then you're in a place where everyone else is. So therefore you have to go against the grain on that. It, there's a thing, huh? let me read this thing. What did it say? I like this. Lucy found this. Wait a minute. It's probably from your book, Jay. Just some great <laughs> yes, but I think it's from Jamie's book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is it? I think it's page one, line one. Is it from the one. paperback, which is out today? <laughs> I think it's paperback. <laughs> which has gone straight to bargain bins all around the UK. Straight, um, straight to Hitcham. <laughs> I, I, she, she, she found this thing. It said, it doesn't help you to know how you got here. Just keep going one step after the next. It doesn't help you to know how you got here. It's really interesting. Mate. Mm. That's interesting. I, 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 it Let's play it, on that for a second just yeah. really quick because it, it's so, okay. If you if you if you know, okay. If if you're selling freaking tables, <laughs> right? If you're selling tables, uh, or or you want to sell tables, and you hire someone who's been in the industry for so long, who knows how to sell tables, they're going to sell tables exactly the way they've always been sold. So therefore, there's going to be no creativity there. Mm. You you don't really want to Do know. Do you need a table? No. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you don't <laughs> want. <a> table. To, <laughs> but my point is this: if we can get it, maybe I'm explaining about it. You you don't want to find out how you got there because if you do you're then going to go oh i need to copy that because that's yeah. what people like you kind of just want to go oh fuck here we go let's just doing see something what doing something um copying something it, it's a fine line there's a fine line in this but like to, to straight copy something is never going to sort of come off as inspiring to anyone else no. as, as if you at least put your own sort of twist on it and that your own twist bit is the most important part um anyway so you know with with leap it was about i just didn't feel i felt like my lyrics i, I, I liked I've, I've always you know the lyrics i've uh, the lyrics in the songs that i've released have always been words that i've meant they've been honest um rooted in experiences i've had um if not telling the stories of experiences i've had but there was a boundary to push there as far as vulnerability goes mm. um so i that was the big leap uh for me in the in the making of this album Mm. Is it? Are you most vulnerable because you are talking about yes. your relationship? It's always been something that's that, been quite private. You know, yeah. it's been our choice for it to be a more of a private thing that I don't. I'm not very sort of public about. Yeah. But like I say, it came to a point where I. It, it, I think now and again there might have been an assumption. I didn't ever try and look too sort of closely into this, but there might have been this assumption that I was single. 
And that's all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not the truth. And that's also not, that doesn't feel fair in any way on Lucy, who, again, like she, us, we wanted a, to keep our private life private, but we didn't want it. I didn't want people thinking so far in the other direction. Mm. Yeah. Because then we sort of, we're, we're operating like Lucy doesn't even exist. And she's such an important part of my life. So, um, yeah. I, it, There's going to be a moment when you're but, performing <laughs> this new Well, album. she walks out on stage singing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's, you've got, you, because you cry, you, you're going to have tears for sure. I mean. There we go. Come on, there <laughs> we go. Um, yeah, yeah. Also. <laughs> Especially with your new baby girl. And well, this that. is it. We, you, we, you know, we had a baby nine months ago, Ada. And, um, is it Ada Violet? Or Ada, uh, uh, well, Violet's her middle name. Violet's yeah, middle yeah. Name. But we, we were very excited when she was born. So when I posted about it, we gave you the whole, the whole name. Yeah. Ada Violet Bay. Uh, and um, yeah, we, we, we also, I think, you know, we, we very much, we didn't want that to be a secret either um, because it's something we're so proud of. And, and, and uh, I don't know, it just, it just I, you know, I want to sort of talk about it because Ada exists. Mate, it's you know amazing. I mean? But also, can I just say from a, from a, from a guy, right, you speak about we, we, we hold our chest up high and all right. these kind of things, and that's what we do, especially in our 20s. We get to our 30s and we kind of hit this weird spot, right, yes. where we suddenly go, fuck, everything that we thought existed doesn't really exist. Everyone's guessing. Yeah. We, we suddenly realize that it's all like, oh, it's not as all, it's cracked up to me and life is hard and all these different yeah. things. Your vulnerability is epic because you're, especially as a dude, you, you write about things. One of the things I love, you talk about a breakup, but it's with your, one of your best mates. Yeah, I do. I wrote, so I wrote, there's a couple of songs. That's a hard one to talk can you, about Can you well. explain that? Well, I just, I've there's a couple of songs in this album. It's a long sort of historic relationship, that, that friendship that I'm refer referring to. <clears throat> and um, that's him starting to cry. There you go. <laughs> we got him. We've got him. <clears throat> There's just too much milk in my tea. That's what it really was. You know, We've it's got classic. Him. Got him. Um, Damn lactose. Uh, <laughs> Damn lactose. <laughs> um, and I just, it kind of went sour. And um, it's it's not the lactose. Sorry, I was thinking you about love the milk. Are you laughing at that? And <laughs> laughing at that. Can you can you can you say what happened or no? Uh, no. I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry. Right, there we go. Yeah. But but I, I can say that. It felt like it felt like uh, too special uh, uh, a history that we had together to just accept that it was all done for. So it, th this experience has found its way into some songs, and in those songs, I'm trying to celebrate our history. And there's a song like the first record song on the record, the first song on the record, "Give Me the Reason," really says we've had we've got so there's so much that we have like historically, and 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 we have such a sort of rich past. So give me like one reason to keep fighting for our friendship and I will keep fighting. Um, it can't all just sort of end like this. I don't know. I don't, I don't break up well, I guess. <laughs> no, mate. And I think, I, I think what's interesting with you, you've never had a breakup right. or, or things like that. So, and, and what's insane is that typically what we talk about with, because relationships don't have to be, um, you know, they don't have to be like, like sexual or whatever relationships are like, oh, it, man. Yeah, like friendships are, are much deeper yeah. a lot of the time. And, and that's even, and that, that's even more of a heartbreak. For me, for me, it's all, it's, it's yeah, all, whether romantic or not, like re re all relationships are sort of, um, are sacred, mm. uh, in, in their way. Or s certainly uh, there are, we all have specific ones that are sacred and it's, it's, my point is it's never just one. Maybe it's five, maybe it's ten. It's it, it's not necessarily all of them either. But there's always a select few that are so important. Um, you know, to, I've watched friends go through various kinds of breakups from really sort of sacred relationships, and I've obviously experienced a few myself with friendships and stuff. So, uh, also, you know, to be very real, um, one of the I don't know if it's a secret, but one of the details within holding down a, a really long term relationship is to be sort of super straight and honest with each other. And that can lead to all sorts. Mm. Um, and the fact that Lucy and I are so strong and, and together is, is a testament to being able to right. talk about everything and anything. Um, and all these different experiences find ways into songs for me. Relations are hard. Yeah, man. It's, 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 but, but they're incredible. Yes. Um, and um, I am just this person who, who I don't know, I'm... It's, I'm, I'm fragile in the same way that everybody is. And um, one of my ways, one of my sort of therapies is to, is to sort of write about it. The songs I write don't always sort of see the light of day, but some of them obviously do. And um, it's, it's, I found, I suppose it's important sometimes to share. It's hard, it's scary to sort of share sometimes, especially in more and more sort of public ways. But the way that it brings 
me and other people together, the way that it brings people together is, Dude, is, is sort of, is important. The greatest thing I think about music, right, is that you can be anyone. You can be a builder, mm. you can be mm. a swimmer, you can be an artist, you can be, it doesn't matter, right? Because you have your headphones in, and you're listening to it. And you can lose yourself. You can yeah. lose yourself in yeah. it. No one freaking knows what you're listening to. Yeah. So I could be listening to James Bay. I could yeah. listen to Spice Girls if I want yeah. to, whatever it is. And, and you connect on such a level with these individuals. Yeah. So what you're writing about then hits them right yeah. here. And everyone has, you know, you know, you, some of your songs, I can, I can place where I was when, yeah, that's, when yeah. I freaking heard it. You yeah. Know? I, I, yeah. That's that, that is a beautiful thing about music. It, it, it really is. Um, and, uh, I think it's it's the reason why I've gone as far as to sort of be someone who makes music, who wanted to, who wants to write songs, who wants to ex process and express my emotions in in lyrics and, and to music, uh, because I've always got so much from it um, that I wanted to try it out myself, I suppose. Okay, you, you're telling stories that loads of people have also experienced and they'll probably be listening to the lyrics and they'll they'll hear nuance of it and they'll kind of get it and they'll like you put your well, own you put exactly. your own story you onto do. it you put your own and i think that's where it. the real connection it, it's an amazing forms. it's that's an amazing sort of detail and and bit of sort of magic that like i experienced listening to music and uh, amazingly other people experience listening to my music i've just done uh with the release of leap i went around the uk um to record stores. Some of the record stores like booked a venue. So some record stores we played like a, I played like an in-store show. Mm -hmm. and some of them were called an out-store show because the record store was a bit so small and they would, uh -huh. and they would book a venue for a couple hundred people to come oh, into okay. and we play a show. But uh, what I was doing every time is I was meeting fans after the show. So I'd play for sort of 45 minutes and sort of show some new songs from the album and, and, and uh, talk about them. And then it was like a line of 200 people that I was sort of meeting, saying hi. I was like signing an album, doing a photo, all this stuff. Um, the things that they had to say as, as fans of my music, I may, not just because we, I've had, you know, all artists have had two years of pandemic away from that, that closest connection with their fans, mm -hmm. that in the flesh connection, not just because of that, but really just, just, it just came with releasing more music for the first time in a while. I was absolutely sort of bowled over. It was pretty breathtaking that the, the, what this music seems to mean, or even some of these songs seems to mean to, to, fans the fans that i met in the last week in the last 10 days or something that i've been doing it and it was everybody it was you know people in their 60s 70s it was people in there there was like 10 year old kids there was people lots of people in there like like, like teenagers obviously couples it's in their style 20s, though, all these the different, style of your it music was, it's right? touching on all these different people yeah. there's people with tattoos of the lyrics in the first the second album there's people <laughs> who are asking me to scribble lyrics so that they could get them tattooed from this new album which is That's unbelievable nuts. every single time someone asks me that i say are you sure are you sure you want this? are you sure you want this sort of thing people have got tattoos of like me that's like insane. Pictures of myself. I'm like, that's that. That must have but messed me, him up when I cut my hair. But I, I think this as well. Like, okay, we if we look at social media, right? Uh, um, okay, if we look at the, Ricky Gervais of all people, actually, which is actually quite true. Um, you know, Martin Luther King, um, Nelson, Mandela, you know, or, yeah. or, uh, I don't know, JFK, whoever it is, all these amazing speakers, right? These people who freaking, yeah. you know, held a room and held the yeah. world or whatever it is. You know, because social media, everyone has a voice. And, right. and when someone over speaks too much now, we go, oh, shut up. So actually, <laughs> because they do, right? Because we're like, oh, God, get, there's so many people talking. Easy, yeah. Where you get lost. With music, the, the voice, people don't go shut up. They no. actually want to hear more, right? Yeah. Which I think is a really great place. That's why words and lyrics and, and songs and, and parts It's amazing it. what, a, what a sort of... Um I don't know if neat is quite the right word, but just it's, it's such <laughs> a like... It. It's such a like... It's such a special, it's never, a song is never necessarily sort of as imposing as, as, a, as a grandiose speech. Nothing against a grandiose speech from, from anybody, but you can put a song on repeat and all that different stuff and it can affect you in different ways at different times in your life, in your day. Um, it's, a, it's a really unique piece of art, a, a song. It's a, it's a magical thing. And, and it obviously, long may new songs be written and stuff get released, but also what, the magic is unknowable. Like we can't know how to sort of write. This is why everybody doesn't write songs. You know, you, you can't, you, you can't there's, it, yeah. there's no secret. Mm -hmm. And that's what keeps it sort of so special, I suppose. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> I shouldn't say this necessarily, but maybe it's easier to sort of teach people how to sort of write a great spe speech or I don't know. It's just not, it's never quite as moving, it seems. No, For me not. at least, and I'm, no. a, I'm a music fan, so I'm going to say that, mm. but like. What is, out of, out of, you know, 
winning the you know brits awards and grammy nominations mm. and albums and all this kind of stuff when you when you when your daughter gets born yeah is there nothing quite like there's it? nothing quite like it in the world is it insane it, it, it's just it's it's all the cliches it's all is the it cliches. really you, you guys got kids no i don't yeah. have it it's it's all the cliches all the cliches you heard in the movies and, and everything about it being so incredible and overwhelming and terrifying and, and euphoric it's all of them it, it uh it's you don't know what you're doing as well. You know, you? You, I'm not a clue. You have no uh, clue. You have no clue. <laughs> you know, everybody sort of says, I think there's that, you know, everybody has a baby and says, you know, that my baby's the most beautiful baby in the world and my baby is the most beautiful baby in the world. That cliche is so true. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, you know, everybody says it and means it in the same way and I mean it in the same way. So, yeah, it's totally breathtaking and it, it, it puts things into perspective. That's been an interesting experience. How hard is it to juggle? Very. Yeah. Lucy's doing a, unbelievable job uh being a mum and shout out to you lucy yeah, shout she's, out she's, to she's, you. she's 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 lead parent and uh because i'm flying off to do this thing and that thing which is heartbreaking in its own way and i was mm. never very good at leaving lucy when i was going on tour and i got we, we built up a sort of a strength she would obviously she was able to come away and stuff quite often but um we built up a sort of strength uh, that we sort of developed when when having to sort of part Mm. and um, got better at it and now a little baby just sort of gives you that look and doesn't know that you're going and it's easy to just want to sort of ball Fuck. but it's, it's, all, it's all necessary stuff and um, hopefully I'll take Ada on tour we'll, we'll, we'll all be on tour as a family sort of some, sometime soon I don't know when yet but um, do you believe in soulmates? or do you think it's like timing and things like that? it's a difficult question to answer you know it, <laughs> Do I believe in soulmates? Because just hearing you talk about Lucy right, and your album Leap and all that kind of stuff and being able to like speak so openly about it, it's like, dude, that's, that's, it's a pr powerful shit. And, um, you know, you, 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 you always reference back to her. I see interviews as well. You reference back to her all the time and, and the fact that you find it hard to leave her. And also, if we're being totally straight, right? And, you know, I remember when I first got any tiny bit of no trust, and that's not even worth Dude, I was I was out and about. Sure, you know, sure. dating as many people we as just, things. Then you we, just never had that. Lucy, you just... no, we didn't. We I didn't. We we had we we have had something incredibly sort of special and tight knit since way before anybody knew who I was. Mm. And um, I think going into the notoriety or whatever, sudden versions of fame or whatever was wonderful and exciting and terrifying. And it was I felt like a rabbit in the headlights a lot. Mm. Mm. Um, and even though a lot of the time I had a big smile on my face and I was very excited and grateful to be wherever I was, whether it was a sort of a red carpet or whatever. When I got home to Lucy, who often wasn't with me at those things, sometimes she was, but getting home or getting back into the car with her after those things, it was a big sort of exhale because really? you're back with this sort of person who that's, that's such. Be you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly that. So, I mean, soulmates, I don't want to, uh, Maybe it's a bit cheesy. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it feels even bigger than that. It feels even wow. stronger and more sort of powerful than that. And it's hard to sort of name it or sort of describe mm. it. But you just, I think you share something with someone for so long. And we're, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, saying things like soulmates, kindred spirits, all that stuff is, is potent. But like, it's, it's, it's just, it's just sort of very sort of special. And in another way, it's, it, it exists and sort of functions kind of day by day. It's not, it's easy to look back, but like our, the, the 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 sort of power of what we have is is brand new every single day mm. um that maybe that i don't know i'm I, literally I, 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 stumbling I, I, no, no, I, I it's I almost it's almost like soulmate kind of lessens it it's like more special no, somehow like, and i jamie i know you're absolutely not trying to sort of lessen it but no, I, I, no. somehow somehow that's true um it's hard to put into words. Yeah, yeah no. no, it is. <laughs> Maybe, but it's, it's so funny. I, I, I just, I recently just got engaged to. Oh, to so, yeah, and and I, I it's not. I, I swear to God, I'm not just saying this because whatever on podcast and shit. Like, I, I wake up every day and I'm like, fuck, sick. She's there. Yeah, man. Like, like, I have that, and I and I truly Ugh. never thought I would have that because I, I I I had relationships and stuff like that, yeah. and I just never had that quite connection. And then I met someone who was a mate of mine for many years or a few years. And um, it just suddenly clicked one day, and I was like, "Oh my god, actually, this and that's beautiful, man." Yeah, and and I and so that's why I'm just curious what your thoughts no, are on absolutely. it because I honestly feel feel that when I never thought that would be the case ever, 
and and you had it from such a young age. Yeah, I, I, I love the fact that you just say every day it's like a brand new mm. thing. Yeah, it yeah, it's it's it, it it's just how it feels. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I have various mates asking me how how to sort of hold down a long term relationship, and I'm yeah. like, I don't necessarily know. I think yeah. I think, but I think. Uh, strangely that's like a, a kid coming up and saying hey how do I have a career like yours and I, I don't know but like yeah. in both things be honest mm. it, it, in, in all things probably just sort of be as honest as you can and like with yourself be honest with yourself because walking around telling everybody what you really think isn't always the sort of smartest way to go about <laughs> life but just being honest with yourself it's the greatest piece of advice I think actually that's mm. made dude I, that is insane I still struggle at it I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's, it's not easy either. It's, it's, cause it's, we don't want to be weak. In nah, we don't want to seem, we don't want to come across Especially that way. Especially to ourselves. It's so, it's so difficult. Um, but it can, it, it can, ha it can absolutely sort of have its, its rewards, even its sort of subtle ones that, that will benefit you in the long term. I think, you know, yeah. it's be, be, it's tough though. I, you know, I, it's very easy to sort of sit here. Like I'm some example, I, you know, I'm not necessarily, it's just, it's just, it's just my experience. I'm learning one thing more than anything else and more often than anything else. It's like, you know, being honest with yourself is the, is the way. Um, I fucking love that. It's so true. Dude, listen, um, you're, you're back on tour in November. Yeah, we're going, so it, it's exciting that we go, I haven't been to, like we're going to Brixton Academy in London. I haven't been to that venue for a, a few years now. Well, the last time I was in Brixton Academy, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Ronnie Wood joined me on stage from no Rolling way. Stones. Get out of oh here. <laughs> Ronnie, I'll give him a shout. Do you fancy doing it again? <laughs> did you know he was coming or did he just get on uh, stage? No, that one I did. I met him a few weeks before. Yeah. Uh, we were at uh, like an That's awards thing that I was playing at. And I said, um, we were talking away and it was a bit of a one thing leads to another through sort of conversation because he was, he was like, are you playing? Are you touring? What are you doing? And I was like, wow, Ronnie Wood's asking me what I'm up to. <laughs> and I told him where we were playing in London. He said, I love that venue. And then he went off to say, like, this is like name drop heaven in a way, but like he went off to say, he said, I've just got to go and say hello to Peter Blake, who's an extremely <laughs> famous painter, of course. But um, he, so he went off to say hello to him. And Sally, his wife said, Take here you go. Take Ronnie's number. He he would be. I'd 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 said something like, "Yeah, we're playing in Brixton. Come and come and join us." And he said like, "On stage." Hmm. And I kind of like sort of felt a bit sick. I saw this in social media, but I went like, "Yeah, on st yeah, join, yeah, sure." <laughs> Ron Ronnie would. He walked off. Very very good bloke. And um, Sally said, "Take his number. He he would be up for it." And I thought, "All right, Sally, if that's what you say." <laughs> Thanks, Sally. So I sort of got in touch with him, and um. And yeah, we, we rehearsed up one of his songs. He was in a great band called The Faces before the Rolling mm. Stones, who I absolutely adore The Faces. I did not have the courage to sort of invite Ronnie Wood to play a Rolling Stones song for some reason. Why mm. not? I don't know. I don't, I don't even know, but I, it felt like a like two on the nose or something. Mm. I, I don't really know why, because of course he was in The Faces as well. And I, I, I was a fan or, of The Faces. Or he said, or he went, you like The Faces? And you're like, yeah. Well, I thought he might think I was, was like, yeah, really. quite sort of like, oh, yeah. this kid knows his shit. Yeah. If I said, hey, let's do The Faces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so oh, I was in a record store. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know if you know. I don't, I don't know if you know. Sorry, I've literally never met you. Mate. But um, he came, yeah, we did, uh, we did uh, a Faces song at uh, Brixton Academy. It was a lot of fun. Um, and we were like in the dressing room. I remember in the dressing room before, and he said, can I smoke in here? And I thought, I'm not going to tell you no. I've no idea. No, probably Sorry, not. Sorry, Ronnie can't. It's probably very <laughs> illegal, but I'm not going to tell you no. Let me open the window. Uh, so, um, so we did, yeah, we did that. So I'm playing at Brixton. I'm touring in November uh, around the UK, around Europe as well, for a couple of weeks there, a couple of weeks around the UK. We're doing all sorts of fun rooms and, and Brixton's going to be a highlight, but we just had a pandemic. Every single night is going to be a massive highlight. It's going to rock it, dude. It's going to be great. Come along. Please. Oh, man, I would love to. Please. I, to honestly, I, that would be a, a, be a real do. treat. Please, please do, man. We'll, be, we'll come on stage. We'll do a Ronnie. <laughs> come on. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. We could do a Rolling Stones song. It'll be okay because none of us were in that band. <laughs> yeah. Were we? I don't think, I don't think you want us coming on stage. I'm going to clamber on stage. Ma imagine the confusion. He told me. He told <laughs> yeah. me. You, know, you, you could do you could MC energy. You could come out yeah. before us and just announce. <laughs> yeah, he told me I could do it. <laughs> um, mate, James, thank you. Dude, I've been such a fan of yours. Thanks, man. I, I was at the Brits years Thanks, ago when you, when you played and you, you, did, you did that thing on stage with yeah, Justin yeah. and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. That was... And I've been a fan of yours ever since. And when we knew you were coming on the podcast, I was, I was super psyched. Oh. And also what happens is, just to be I suppose a bit vulnerable myself, when you get when you meet people, musicians, whatever, and they come on the podcast and they're just uh, real dudes. It's, oh. a, it's a it's a real treat. So um, I really appreciate, it, man. Good luck with the new album. Lee. Go you. and get it wherever you can. Follow James on Instagram, all social media. Go and get his tickets to his tour coming in November. It's going to be epic. James, what we do at the end of the podcast is leave our listeners with something inspirational. I feel like I've there's been so those. much. There's yeah. been so much inspiration. I don't know if there's um, more in the tank. You know, I find all the most inspirational stuff that sort of means the most is again the cheesiest stuff. Yeah, of course. 
but there was, I met a, a, a young, she was about 14 artist. Uh, I was doing these meet and greets and she was there with her guitar and her CD. And she said, you know, I'm trying to do this like you're doing it. And, um, you know, can you give me advice? And she had a dad with her. And I said this to her. Um, and her dad looked a bit like, oh, really? Because I said, you have to believe in yourself or else nobody else will believe in you. And she's sort of listening and her dad's going, come on, do better than that. <laughs> and I said, I promise you, every single day it. of my experience, if I don't walk into a room with a guitar in my hand, believing that I can like win this entire room over from mm. open mic nights in pubs when I was 19 to the Brits to whatever I did after that, then I know in the moment that nobody's buying it. So you have to absolutely, if you want to do something, you have to, you have to know that you're the best at it. At mm. least in that moment, you have to say, I am the best at this and I'm going to blow you away. Mm. Uh, and, if, and if you don't, then nobody's going to buy it. Um, so make sure you do that before anything else. I freaking love that. James, thank you so much. Everybody, we'll see you next week. Goodbye! Oh, mate, that was-